Uh, you mentioned Sentinel in the sense of Sophia. Sophia is probably the most advanced non-military robot in the world. For instance, the French army recently launched bionic soldiers, actually regulation, officially. <laughs> you can actually find it online. Um, wow. um, Eric Schmidt recently as well mentioned that the, the US um, in, uh, military forces should start using AI to improve their things. So all of this is happening yeah. as we speak. I know that you have right. much more humanistic and that's why I'm very excited and collaborating here, but how do you see this kind of different, there's a lot of different pieces of the, the puzzle. And I think Sophia is a, a piece that is built by a humanist that has both the, the ideas, a bit like, you, well, in order to create as well weapons for, for uh, politicians and for military. But how do you see these parts as well, especially in the conversion between robotics, technology, human evolution, and singularity? I worry about autonomous weapons and, um, and uh, uh, alien AI. Um, uh, however, a lot of the fundamental technologies um, are generally applicable. And I, I personally feel and argue um, uh, um, that uh, humanizing the machines will make AI that understands people much more effectively. And um, rather than um, like uh, creating um, uh, mere data analytic tools that are you know more and more sophisticated, I would like to see their uh, be true machine understanding and I do not think that there can be understanding um, of the human experience unless the algorithms go through human-like experiences themselves they have to walk in our shoes so to speak and that means a full multi um, uh, dimensional you know multimodal perceptual experience with um, you know developmental phases and some simulation of human evolutionary neuropsychology and that um, is not necessarily an easy undertaking um, and you know the question is um, how accurate do we have to make that um, simulation can it you know can it be a like a rough approximation can it be a kind of um, convergent evolution you know not necessarily using all of the details and you know like precise simulation of the human organism but you know just approximate enough to um, allow a, a new kind of consciousness to bootstrap now uh, you know I, I think that it's worthwhile for us to worry um, about the consequences and talk about consequences and debate them. But I really feel like having machines that can care, that are compassionate, is going to make these kinds of um, technologies safe and help um, humans. So the goal here is not just machine awakenings either, it's, it's human awakenings, machines that that care about people enough to help us wake up. Uh, you know, we see um, neuromarketing and um, you know, like really smart um, application of algorithms to feed people's special interests and you know, create these kinds of echo chambers on Facebooks to try to win elections. You know, um, often those will bring people down to a reactionary state. They activate the amygdala which then you know, means that your you know lower reptilian brain is basically taking over your entire um, you know prefrontal cortex. <laughs> your your their web their their weapons of um, of mass hysteria, and uh, that is terrifying. You know to think of us being manipulated into becoming kind of zombies um, by these technologies. I. I think the antidote, though, is to kind of create technologies that gamify enlightenment, that help activate us to the highest levels. You know, human actualization algorithms that create an amplification process that bring us to our higher potential, our higher potential for creativity, for um, for uh, looking through a forest of, of complex negative outcomes in order to find a positive creative. Uh, way forward. That, um, so th this would mean this kind of diplomacy algorithm would be far more powerful and in fact, um, you know, would lead to win-win transactions instead of, um, in instead of exacerbating divisions in our culture, um, you know, because that really doesn't solve anything. If your particular group, if you're worried about, you know, one group lo losing, your group losing versus somebody else, 
then you know often people get reactionary well the the solution is to stamp out the other group you know crush them or whatever but the the actual solution um is to find a way for your group to win and the other group to win because if you're just crushing them then they're going to seek to crush you and it just goes back and forth and things get worse for everyone Ten, uh, you know or or better for a winner and you know and worse for the losers but but net you have a loss whereas these kinds of win-win transactions can um, lead to an overall gain for um for civilization for um uh for the you know for the future of life on the planet potentially so um these are not solved problems, but I really think that um, in order to get these kinds of win-win algorithms working well, you need them to care about people and understand people. You need you need machine compassion that not it doesn't just reflect the compassion of the of the data sets that you're feeding into the machine learning algorithms, because that's never going to play out pure, you know, as a pure kind of understanding on the other side. And we could never I just don't think that we can groom our data well enough that it's going to like ref, like create um ai that's truly deeply good um we need machines that truly awaken themselves and then seek to help boost us that seek to help save the other species of the planet so it's not just humanist it's it's really um a life centric approach uh to to ai and um so th this sort of um life centric approach also then favors algorithms that are closer to being alive um so i can't say that uh, artificial life is alive today yet i mean you know you might be able to run like a simulation of the connectome of a drosophila fruit fly or or um you know, C. elegans, the, the roundworm, but is it alive as it's like running through these simulations? It's really hard to say. Um, you know, maybe, you know, the essence of the sort of soul or creative spirit of life forms is in the, I don't know, quantum gravity in the microtubules, as Penrose and, and Hameroff would, would say. We don't know uh, what all, you know, how many levels down um, and, and deep uh the the processes of life may go but let's just say that bio-inspired algorithms are starting to exhibit um lifelike behavior and um so um that then can help potentially to uh, create tools that allow us to appreciate life more so whether or not the machines themselves are alive um i think that this life appreciation um approach the the life-centric approach to AI can help us be better and to rise up to be better, to seek um, these sort of win-win transactions. So one way or the other, this life-centric approach is, I think, um, the, 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 way, the way forward. So, um, you know, uh, that's how we, um, you know, avoid, you know, if we can get enlightened fast enough, we could avoid deploying, you know, kill drones and weapons of mass annihilation and, you know, <laughs> the um the um the sort of um spiral of of destruction we've got to get smarter that's for sure we've got to do better because otherwise um our ecosystems are going to collapse and um and we're going to just be launching weapons at each other through the process and this brings us to the narratives and to the fiction versus reality and as well the way we create fictions the way we create narratives 